until the word of God that you have heard until it leaves your human spirit with all of the character of God. It doesn't matter how many times you've heard it. If that word has not left your human spirit with all of the character of God, if it has not given your mind the culture of truth, you should not cease to meditate it. You should not cease to hear it. And do not forget this. Until faith has achieved its highest objective, you must not stop to feed your faith. And to feed your faith, you will have to keep hearing the truth again and again. Faith comes by hearing. The more you hear it, the more you understand it. The more you understand it, the more the faith that's born on your inside. There are different types of faith. There is weak faith and there is strong faith. There is little faith and there is great faith. You see, the kind of faith you exhibit depends on your understanding of the formation at your disposal. A truth that hasn't given the culture of truth to your mind should not be archived, should not be kept aside. So, this is what you have to learn to do right now. Learn to crave a truth that you heard that has not shaped your spirit. Learn to crave it. The Bible tells us, Blessed are those that hunger and thirst, for they shall be filled. How much God satisfies you depends on how much you hunger for the truth. So never set the truth aside because you've heard it before. There are those who have read the Bible many times, they keep reading it. You know why? The word of God is that manner that's ever fresh. It never grows stale. And you see, the amount of revelation you have of the word of God is what determines the kind of life you live. We have been called to rest. Our rest is tied to our revelation until a truth has formed the revelation. A revelation that has become a consciousness. You don't stop to listen to it. And so I challenge you to learn the word. You see, you, you are supposed to hear the word of God, a message again and again until you start living out the message. Because we become what we hear through practice. As if we have not become what we've heard, then we have to go back to hear it again until we become what we hear. And so let's, let's, let's become hungry for a truth until it forms the character of the spirit. Until it brings us to an environment of truth where we can't live without it. Make that a habit for yourself. It's a choice you have to make. It's a choice you have to make. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He says, Thou art Peter. Upon this rock I build my church. And I give you the keys of the kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. What do you mean by that? Whatever you disallow on earth, heaven disallow. They had proceeded to take Peter. When he took Peter, the church said no. When the church disallowed it, the Bible said there was an angel sent from heaven. Where was that angel when they took James? Then the church said no. You can't have Peter. Then he said, then was prayer made of the church. And an angel of the Lord was sent. And you see something very interesting about that. When the angel was sent, Peter was actually sleeping. He wasn't fasting and praying. The Bible says the angel touched Peter, lighted on Peter, and the chains fell off. Do you want to go further a bit? Who told those chains what was to be done? Who told those chains what to do? If their chains fell off by the mere touching of Peter, does that even tell you after that non-living things have life in them? And hold on a bit. If you don't believe that non-living things have life in them, what happens to the rod of Moses that became serpent? A dead rod became a living serpent. What do you call that? Magic? That's not magic. A dead rod became a living serpent. And Moses fled from it. And Jesus 
further emphasized the need for us to catch the revelation behind this truth. Jesus said, God is able to raise out of the stones children for Abraham. Many man doesn't have to be born to exist. Adam was not born. Melchizedek was not born. Elijah was not born. Ah. <laughs> Where did God find them? He is able to raise humans from stones. Melchizedek has no beginning, has no end. Where did Melchizedek come from? Have you ever thought about it? Or not born? Full grown man. I was a priest. Nobody challenged his priesthood. And Abraham paid tight. Please. Where did, Mekhi, where did Elijah come from? We are willing just to analyze Elijah the Tishbite. Where he came from, nobody knows. Elijah was not born. Now I see why he couldn't die. Melchizedek, nobody knew how he came, how he left. He just showed up and that's it. And the Bible calls him the priest of Salem, Jerusalem. The priest of the most high God. Abraham paid tithe. And then one day Jesus came and said to them, Abraham, your father rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it when he met Melchizedek. Because Jesus was called in the order of Melchizedek. So Abraham really did see the day of the Lord. That was what he was referring to. Not on the mountain like they claim. That's not what Abraham was referring to. He said, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it. How? He says, Jesus, thou art a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. So if Jesus is in the order of Melchizedek, Abraham met Melchizedek and had communion with Melchizedek. Only Melchizedek ever did communion until Jesus came. Because Melchizedek was a type of Christ and Abraham saw it. And so when he said it, they didn't get the message. Melchizedek was the Old Testament Christ. I hope you're listening to me. People who tell you that God will not manufacture money from heaven, they should, they should keep quiet. They should keep quiet. Even Satan knows that stone can be turned to bread. That's why he asked Jesus to do it. <laughs> he knows. Yes, yes, sir. Satan knows. Yes, sir. He knows. He knows. Satan knows. As I said, if you be son of God, if it was impossible, he won't ask Jesus to do it. So who told you money does not come from heaven? They should stop saying these things. They should stop saying these things. The reason why they say this is because they, they don't have the understanding of the sovereignty of God. What does God's sovereignty state? He says, he does whatsoever pleases him. If he wants to make money out of stone, he can. And he will not be violating anybody. He does whatsoever pleases him. That's sovereignty. He does whatsoever pleases him. And you're saying, can't make money. Don't, and they start telling you, don't believe us. The money doesn't come from heaven. Eh? Hey, hey. Where are you people coming from? So, the money Peter got from the mouth of the fish, where did it come from? Because Jesus didn't have a job. But he had money with Judas that he could have taken from. He sent Peter to the, to the, to the, to the river and said, go catch the fish. But listen, I'm not going to pay my tax from your, from your, from your job. I want to let you know that your job, you don't have to be invested for it to yield results. Because the normal thing would have been for Peter to catch the fish, sell it, and use the money to pay. He said, catch the fish, which is your job. But don't sell it. Let me show you that there's money in your job without you even doing the job. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said, open the fish. We know fish don't eat money. Yes, sir. He said, open the mouth. Yes, sir. And you bring out money. Where did that money come from? He said, go pay tax for me and for you, that the children might be free. And Peter went to the sea. 
There, it's not like there was one fish that was meant to come. It was any fish you catch that is money in the mouth. <laughs> but I thought he said God does not provide money from heaven. So where did money come from the mouth of the fish? And it was a coin. Had one that opened the mouth, took the coin, and, and sent the fish back. Where did the fish get the money from? What about the angel that fed Elijah with bread and fish? Where did he get? He baked, he baked it. Baked the cake. Where did he get the flour? The dough and whatever it is he used. Jazeli pemo da propax de gatela tisti gateti capragista. Gamo reponselita grista. Foolish men, we continue to be foolish. And the ignorant, we continue to be ignorant. But all that child of God, let not their ignorance infect your faith. Let not their foolishness douse the fire of your grace. For he, with whom you are identified is the Almighty and He's sovereign. He does whatever pleases Him, said the Lord. The God you serve. The Hebrew children said, even if God, he said, even if God doesn't about we will not bless but God is able to. God is a, you know, we haven't meditated at that moment. How do you throw people into the fire, a flaming fire, that the people who threw them in were burnt and roasted, then the people you threw in were walking, and yet it says, who walk on the coal and his feet not be blistered. They walk, when they came out, they walked out, they didn't smell smoke. I will pause a moment. I want you to think about that. The three guys shared that mission, they were thrown into the fire, made, it was Nebuchadnezzar that had to narrate this story. They were thrown in. What did God say? He said, when you walk through the waters, you will not be drowned. When you walk in the fire, you shall not be burnt. What does that tell you? The fire is responsive to the voice of God. Many fire has intelligence. Water has intelligence. Everything God created has intelligence. Everything. Some of them may not be animated or living, but they have intelligence. The world knew what to become. Did you read the Bible that God didn't say, thou world become a, a snake? He said, put it down, and the world knew what to become. Because these things were created with intelligence. Did you read your Bible? When Moses struck the rock, he didn't tell the rock anything. The rock knew what to produce. It could have also have produced sand. They brought water because that's what God said. Listen, the things that were created of God are led of the Spirit to know the mind of God. The things that were created of God are led of God's Spirit to know the mind of God without being told what to do. What language did God speak to the whale with? What language? Was it English? Was it Aramaic? Was it Hebrew? Do animals have their, do they, do animals understand human language? What language do animals understand? Bible says, and God commanded the whale. God commanded the whale to vomit Jonah. And the whale went to vomit it to the point of his assignment. Hey. The point of his assignment, the bank of the river, where he needed to come out and go. The whale vomited Jonah. What about the, the ravens that are not friends with man that brought fish to Elijah and meat? They brought him bread, feed. They brought food to Elijah. They, he said, I have commanded the raven to take care of you. Hush. He said, Elijah, I have commanded the raven to take care of you. But you said, this does not come from heaven. I mean, a, do, do you know how impossible these things are? That a prophet will be sustained by birds. And will bring sufficient portion for the, for the prophet. Animals. They are not friends with my ravens. And the ravens brought it. They didn't eat it. They brought it and dropped it for the prophet. 
I am tempted to linger in this point because it, the point is what lingering on. The acts of God. And the raven brought fish, brought food to the prophet. Then Jesus is raised from the dead. And he, he set up fire and he's roasting fish. And he went to meet Peter and said, Do you have you guys have anything? He said, Nothing. He said, Come share. Where did Jesus get the bread and the fish from? And you are telling me God cannot bring money from heaven. Angels cannot pay money to your account. Who told you that? Who told you that? A, 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 a certain church member, I think from one church, I'm not sure what church now, came out to say that. For a long time, she has not feed that gas cooker. That her gas has refused to 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 to, to be to, to be exhausted, and and some um, foolish people they forgot it for forty years. They didn't buy shoes. How can you wear a pair of shoes for forty years? The shoes didn't fly. The, their feet didn't outgrow the shoes. Forty years, nothing happened. I mean, they were growing, the shoes were growing along. 40 years. 40 years. 40 years. Who wears a pair of shoes for five years? And not, and not need to change it. And not on, not on the, they were walking in the wilderness. They wandered. Desert region, so they should wear out. Those shoes should wear out. They should fight. Hot weather. They wore their shoes. He said, your feet were not swollen. Your clothes didn't grow old on your body. They didn't have change of clothes. Shoes. Same shoes for 40 years. Those who lasted that long. Some 20 years. Some 30 years. Same thing. Do humans think we... Go? I'm angry actually. I'm angry. Look at it, Deuteronomy chapter 8. Please sit down. We'll come back to Colossians in a moment, but go back from verse 1 to 4. Chapter 8, book of Deuteronomy. Are you here? Look at it. All this commandment which I commanded this day shall ye observe to do. That you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou would escape his commandments or no. Next verse. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread only. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord, doth man live. The next verse. Thy raiment was not owed upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these 40 years. They were trekking. He said, your clothes didn't grow old on your body. Your shoes didn't fire. Your foot were not swollen. And they were walking every day. They would stop at some point. Continue for years. The clothes didn't go, they didn't have change of clothes because they left out of Egypt in a hurry. Even if they had some clothes, how many clothes will you have to have for 40 years? You know what 40 years is? And then someone comes to tell you that his gas has refused, has not ceased to supply, it's been so for one year. You say you ridicule it, you fool. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, is it that it's impossible with God, or what's the problem? What's the problem? You know the shame in this thing that supposed pastors comment on these things, like these things. And I ask myself, how did you become a pastor? Who commissioned you to the church? Please sit. I don't want to call anybody's name. But some of you know some of these pastors. Yes, how did you become a pastor? Get ready to lose your church. Yes, sir. 
I see pastors who are making, making, making messes. Pastors that are morose, making messes of people's lives. Bad temper pastors, that's not morose, bad temper. Making, making messes of people's lives. Saying things they ought not to. Wanting to gain approval from celebrities. Celebrities that are dead people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That are lost. Yes, you bring sir. them to the altar. Losers. Bunch of ordinary folks yes, that we see at the airport, they are ordinary. Yes, Want looking for attention. And the pastor will be giving comedians mic to come and teach in their church. And a host of these pastors, I have long, long distanced myself from them. And then, you know. <laughs> Let me focus on my children. No, is it that it's impossible with God or what? When they, when they ridicule these things, is it that God can't do it? That's the question I ask myself. Is it that it's not possible for someone's gas to be inexhaustible by divine uh, intervention? Because if you don't believe it, then go to Deuteronomy the, chapter 8. They are clothed. So if I said to someone, or if I came out to say that my, this suit I have worn, this suit I have been wearing for 30 years and it has made this new and fresh. You say that is rubbish. It's not possible. But he just told you for 40 years, their raiment, please see, their raiment was not old upon them. You see, they say, as you were keeping them, upon them. Wow. <laughs> Neither did their foot swell these 40 years. So they wore shoes because at some point your, your feet should swell. Yes, he did it. He did it. He did it. So what, why can't you meet your car at the level you left the gas for one year and it's still so and you drive everywhere still there? What about the woman that borrowed vessels? And the oil will not cease until there was no more vessel. For, for so is the will of the Lord yes. that with well doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Matthew 11, verse 28. Please, verse 27. My apologies. Quickly. Please. Who? Oh, sh- um, could you just quickly compare something for me and then come here? Um, yeah, I need you to understand because some of you don't really understand. First Corinthians chapter 15. Quick, a quick one, a quick one. A quick one. I'll just show you and I'll move on from here. Come back here. <clears throat> Not good. I want you just two verses, okay? 45, no, uh, about three, right? 45 to 47, First Corinthians 15. Guys, I want you guys to look at it. From 45 to 47, 45, are you there? Okay, First Corinthians 15. One, two, read. All right, please pause. You can see there are two Adams, right? Okay, so the first man, Adam, was made the living soul. The last Adam, not the second Adam. Last, that means he's the last. There's no third. That's what this is, second. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Of course, we are going to get there later, but not now. Next verse. Next verse. All right, did you see 
He didn't say the last man. He says the second man. Right? He is the last Adam and the second man, not the last man. But there's the last man. Do you know the last man? Who is the last man? The new creation. Because if Jesus was the last man, then would have been would have been last man officers. <laughs> All right. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Do you understand that? So what comparison are we having? We are comparing two people, right? The first one is called what? Adam. Last one is called what? Adam. Two Adams. So I said the work of God creation consists in what? Two Adams. Right? Beautiful. So what did God say to the first Adam? We read in Psalms 8, right? He says, thou hast put all things under Adam's feet. Now, if he did that with the first Adam, could he not have done it with the second Adam? Did he do the second Adam? He did. Right? Please sit. So what are these all things? Matthew eleven twenty-seven. 27. Please, let's close. We want to read. Pause. All things are delivered unto me of my father. What are all things? He said, Things in the heaven, things on earth. You know the one that excites me the most? Visible and invisible things. Visible and... So you mean invisible things are under my control? Yes. How many are these invisible things? He said whether they be angels, whether they be dominions, whether they be thrones, whether they be principalities, my God, my God. You mean all things are under my... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, don't, I, don't want to, I don't want to run around the auditorium yet. Hopefully tonight we should do that. What? Are you freaking kidding me? No. It's true. I'm not joking with you. He says all things are delivered unto me, my father. What are all things? No, come on, leave it here. Leave it there. Go back to it. All things are delivered unto me, my father. The Colossians tells us what these things are. Colossians 1. For by him we are all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth. Visible and invisible ways that there be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. So when he said all things are delivered unto me, my father, he was referring to these things. But we know he has not given them to us. Listen. Reigning in life consists in farmer's D. Reigning in life consists in farmer's D. When to reign in life means to be... See how you have become a leader. Reigning in life means having the dominion. Dominion means fruitful, multiply, rule, replenish, subdue. Yes, sir. Listen, folks, the goal, the overarching goal of our salvation is R-O-I-L, reigning in life. Yes, reigning, that R-I-L, I told to write early, it means reigning in life. Reigning in life. Some time ago, I began to see in an open vision, R-I-L. And having studied engineering as my first degree, my mind went to electricity, resistance and induction. You know my inductance? Okay, if you did electrolysis and all of those things, elect electricity. Is God trying to tell me he is not an electrician? <laughs> I saw the first time, I just ignored it. I thought maybe it was, it was, um, um, it was uh, my mind digging into my subconscious to get some substance of old. After some time, I saw it again. I, I began to see this open. You know how you are walking 
and something appears before your eyes, and you say, ah, you pause. What was that? People around you won't even know what you're doing. And then you just, ah, you're doing everything, and maybe you, you're watching TV, and then you just, your, your screen just changes to all right. Ah. It, was becoming, it was becoming harassing and embarrassing. I felt, I felt, I felt harassed, like, Lord, we're harassing. Would you just come on and tell me what it is already? <laughs> Just the way I see scriptures, I just I can just read scriptures in the air. I'm telling you, they'll just be shown. I say, okay, Lord, what's the meaning? Just tell me, I, I beg. So when I saw how I am, after some days, this was for months, I said, Lord, please, I beg in the name of God. <laughs> I beg God, Lord, to tell me. He says, son, it means reigning in life. I said, Jesus. Is this what you've been trying to tell me? Say, yes. I've been trying to tell you that this is the goal of salvation. Reigning in life is the goal of salvation. Is the go- is what I gave the first Adam that he missed. Is what I've given the second Adam or second man. Reigning in life. And tell okay, what is reigning in life? He said, reigning in life. Go check what I told the first man and see what I told Jesus. Because by the time you read, you read about Jesus, which we'll get to, he now said, when he shall have subdued, he will, he will hand over. I will tell you about that later. Reigning in life consists in fruitfulness, multiplication, repentance, subduing. That is, dominion is reigning in life. Hallelujah. Would you just take your offering right now, your child? Oh, we bless you. There's something going on in your life. I know. I know something marvelous is going on in your life. I know the Holy Ghost is touching areas of your life. I know that. I know the Lord is touching areas of your life. I know transformation is going on in our spirits. And it will reflect in the outward being. I'm telling you. We give you praise, Lord. In this, in this mood, Lord. We just give our offerings, that tithes and our first fruits and kingdom come. We give all to you with humility and gratitude. And we are changed as we give this offering. Laughter with reality. Laughter with fruits. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, Lord, we ask that your spirit will breathe on it. The breath of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. after me right now. Oh Lord God I believe that you love me and that you offered your son Jesus Christ in my stead who was offered for my offenses and was raised back to life for my justification. Today I ask for the Lord Jesus to be my savior. I ask for the remission of sins of my soul. I ask for eternal life of my spirit. And by faith, I receive the remission of sins in my soul. I receive eternal life from my spirit. And I declare I am born again. I declare the life of God is coming to my spirit. I declare I now belong in the family of God. And so I ask you, Father, go and repeat after me. Come and place your mark of ownership on me by 
the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, today I become a member of the family of God. I ask for your presence into my life with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In Jesus' name, I'm born again. I have eternal life and I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In Jesus' name. Amen. You pray that prayer, open your mouth right now and pray with me in the spirit because you have just been baptized of the Holy Ghost right now. So how do I know? Psalms 81 verse 10, it says, open your mouth wide and I'll feel it. So the rest of you pray with me just in 60 seconds. practice. <laughs> Kazambrodi Gabadina Ikapate la Gloria Perisato Ibragina Sacradi Meredose Frokitaba Rabashi Cabela Endo Cobra Irakata Labroco Rabakashi Beredidi Proso Freke Dele Manda Krista Rabababa Bokosu in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the spirit of dominion, the spirit of lordship, by the Holy Ghost, I trample and crush to pieces this day all my worries, all my cares, all my sorrows, all my troubles, all my limitations, I declare where these are bounded, grace did much more abound. By the abundance of your grace, I rule over them. From today, From today they, shall no they shall no longer have dominion, have dominion over, me. over me. In the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. I, subdue them. I subdue them. I rule over them. Over them. For, as written, For as it is written, the Egyptians, the Egyptians you see today, you shall see them. No more. no more. I declare, I declare these, challenges, these challenges, these worries, these cares, these, cares, these, troubles, these troubles that I see today, I see today in, the in the name of Jesus, I shall see them, shall see them no, more. no more. Speak in other tongues. Go ahead. You have dominion over them by the Holy Ghost. Dominion over sin, dominion over poverty, dominion over fear, dominion over lack, dominion over anxiety, dominion over suicidal thought, dominion over same sex desires, dominion over fornication, dominion over immorality, dominion over infertility, dominion, dominion by the Holy Ghost, Lava Ponte, Lake Bos Santo, Luba Haya, Luba Haya. Montoko Bosha, Lee Havana Minto Kobo, in a pass of the Manto, in a proper Kopoto, Ipa Yatata, Tones of Emidai, Tones of Emidai, you have the heart, you have the heart, Ziva Cambregizo, with a practice in Paris and the Game and Drigo, Broke up with Gavaris and Mind. If I die, I saw me on the Gaba. Julie Apodeza. Juve Gamina, Missy for Ripataka. Zofia Tida. Zofia Tiza, Pelos of Fugima. Scalfri Ostovino. Liga Prickis Devo Minda Christi. Vri Azomindo Opro Cabisa. Zaki da Ipro Cotogrisa la Mantri. Bisa Fatana, Bisa Fatana. Gure Conge, Ego Pela. Lord of Patagahi, Zayi Pacanino Epicata, Ada Brococo, Alaki Pandrima, Alaki Bohoko, 
Antibo separatis. Corrabada. We have the rule over them. Bless be God who has given us the victory. By the victory of Christ, I decree we cross the pieces. We have the rule. We have the dominion. We have the rule, the influence, the authority, the power over these limitations, over these troubles, these challenges. We look for them. We find them no more. By the Holy Ghost, through the abundance of grace, we subdue them. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I would advise you to hold a triumphant amen when I say that. In the name of Jesus. Oh, this is giving reality to expectations, to hard desires. So say after me, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I ask and I receive. I possess. I have ownership of these desires, of these expectations. Why it is called today. By the Holy Ghost, I declare as it is written, all things are yours. Therefore, I take ownership of these, of these. Today, I declare these expectations have become my reality, my reality in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Speak another tongue. So to the lazy baby at the reed and the grass of the bread. Maliko profes the ice gummet. Rogopila and Madalo Oscovrido. You repent the best if a dabbing a deal. Jabalai the pepon. I mean the glassila. Billy a pono minto. I die the days of days of both for Tata. Bikani mesu go pet the devil, Lutis Avis Dava and the Meha, but Tada Bako Mini the Dabo, Lock Ram in the Pelego, Lava City Apropono, in the Mingo of the Lee of the Dava, O Jami of the Day, Mock of the Dava the Spear, Zebra of the Yapto, Moss of the Grassy, Lock of the Pepe as a Bondo Oma, Mr. Pali Gap the Lama from the Zara and the Bottom of the Pia. Don't salir de, don't salir de para el rey. Tú ni para la pis, tú ni para la pis. No te toques, prende que te pongo que te pongo que te pongo que te pongo. Tú ni a pesar de que te pongo que te pongo. Para ya ya, no ni te piso que te pongo que te pongo. Para ya ya, no ni te pongo que te pongo. 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 Ali the Pope, you repent the Grahad, you recraft the Pope, you repent, for Jebedi, Bozikata, Bodiketo, Bilegro Focha, Beronto, Zuzaha, Bide Fire, Bide Kong, Dubrika, Zubrika, Rondo Boshi, Dulekata, Dulzeka, Duliko, Duli Denga, Bili Zifu, Juzi Patrick Nome, Dubri Deva, Rondo Dina Fadramo, Boko Dia, Pura, Pura, Loka Pedisato, Pitanja, Pitapisa, Loka Pedro, Togo Kibia, Nobri Casato, Pro Your Dinner, Conda Dabi, Sepedis of the Cana, Loki Paras De, Nego Pitikato, Loki Jesu, Pitanja, Pitanja, Loki Jota Pura, Pitanja, Pitanja, Shuki Tundo, Pedizo, Nobri Ta, Nobri Ta, Nobri Ta, in the name of Jesus.